Animal husbandry is what they used to call us. Okay. And that's going to consist of adapting or adjusting the animal, which is what a lot of us are interested in doing, making genetic progress. But what I see too often is changing the environment. You know, improving pastures, feed supplements, choosing favorable calving seasons, vaccinations, controlling parasites. None of us in the room would stand up and say those were bad things. But all of these have cost, especially in today's industry. They're all expensive. And so I see guys choosing to try to modify the environment a little too much, in my opinion. So I believe where it's, you know, where you can't modify the environment or where it has too much cost, you've got to have an animal that is adapted. I believe that's mandatory. So I believe the Brahmin cross, Brangus cross, Brangus, uh, all of those uh, breeds have a lot to offer in terms of adaptability. When we look at cavities, we've alluded to a little bit of this. Uh, certainly, everybody in the room understands that when cows have their difficult time calving, uh, reproduction can go down. We have cow death loss that results. Some really interesting work that was done at the mark where they took Brahmin cows and Charlie cows, derived embryos out of them. And then put some of those embryos, put the Brahmin embryos back in a Brahmin cow, and then took some of these Charlet embryos and put them in a Brahmin cow. Then they took some Brahmin embryos and put them over here from these cows and put them in these Charlets and some Charlets in the Charlets. One of the things they have shown is that the Brahmin cow has the ability to, to suppress birth weight. She has less uterine blood flow, significantly less uterine blood flow, and it doesn't really matter which calf she's gestating in this case, okay? As compared to the Charlet cow. Bottom line, when we look at birth weight or fetal weight at day 271 here, we're talking about some real suppression. When we put the same Charlet embryos in a Charlet cow, we get a 103 pound birth weight. When we put those embryos, Charlet embryos in the Brahmin cow, we get 75 pound birth weight. 28 pound suppression in birth weight. So that Brahmin cross cow can actually regulate birth weight. We can mate the cow to, to bulls with more uh, growth potential. And this relationship has been shown to exist in the half-blood cows as well. Parasite resistance. I think there's some of this, again, it goes with that adaptability. There's work uh, out of Arkansas, again, that I, everybody knows that horn flies are going to reduce milk production, reduce weaning weight. Um, the, the work out of Arkansas will suggest that Horn fly reduction from adding Brahmin influence into the herd was equal or greater to that realized by spraying the cows all the time with organophosphates. So they, they uh, basically accomplished the same goal without any chemical control. This is some work as Brahmin percentage went up out of Louisiana. Horn fly counts decreased. Some more work out of Arkansas. Again, when we looked at Angus, uh, the reciprocal crosses are Brahmin. Uh, Angus cows were above that threshold that a lot of our entomologists tell us of 200 flies. They were above that threshold where there would be a lot of economic damage. Our crossbreds and certainly our Brahmin were below that threshold. If you look at internal parasites, there's work out of Australia which suggests that Brahmin cattle were minimally affected by the level of internal parasite infestation. Some work out of Louisiana that was published recently uh, where they looked at fecal egg counts, Angus versus Brangus, the Brangus cows actually had lower internal parasite loads. Now, both of these are relatively low, suggesting the cows are a lot more tolerant of internal parasites. But the big difference here to me is this one, calves. If those calves were Brangus versus Angus, they had significantly less worm load. We, we know that the worm burden can be... Uh, potentially really harmful on younger animals. And there was actually a tendency for heifers to be less in this particular study if they were afraid of breeding. <laughs> One other thing that affects longevity of these cows when we look is teeth deterioration. And I don't have a lot of data from a lot of the crosses. One of the few studies that's actually um, looked at this significantly, when you look, this is the number of smooth mouth would be a zero, so a lower number is less teeth effectively. Our boss Tars cows had a 
uh, smoother mouth or more broken mouth versus our all of our boss Indians cattle kept their teeth for a much longer time period. So when we look at this cow, whatever you call her, whatever breed or description you want to put on her, if she is some boss Indians cross, the longevity is better, adaptability is better, cavities is better, parasite resistance is better, and she keeps her teeth longer. 